everybody. I am 38 weeks pregnant with our fifth child and I'm finally getting around to packing my hospital bag. I have been a little stressed about this. I, I would have liked to have it packed a week or two ago, so I'm glad that I'm doing it now. I've just honestly been like pretty tired and run down. This morning I woke up with a lot of energy and I was like, it's, it's happening now, I'm packing this bag. So first of all, this is my hospital bag that I'm sharing with Christopher. It's our necessities for when I go into labor and delivery and also during the postpartum and recovery experience. I don't have much for a newborn in here. All of that stuff I packed in our diaper bag. And we've already posted a video of me packing that newborn diaper bag. You can check that out if you wanna get like the full picture of what we'll be bringing with us to the hospital. I like to pack them separately because I feel like we don't need that newborn diaper bag. As soon as we get to the hospital, it's a little less to carry in. And then it also keeps things organized when we're in postpartum and like just really exhausted and needing to reach for like exactly what we need but not wanting to sort through a million things. So we keep our diaper bag and our hospital bag separate. One of the really tricky things about packing a hospital bag is a lot of the stuff that you're putting into it you actually need up until you give birth. <laughs> so like maybe your favorite maternity clothes or things like toothbrushes or your wallet, that all needs to go in here, but you can't necessarily live without it for weeks waiting to go into labor. So I like to have a section that's for those necessities and then to like write a note in my phone and remember to add it like at the last minute. The other thing about that is you might go into labor and need to get to a hospital and not be able to go home first. So if you do have any duplicates of things like duplicate toothbrush or deodorant or things like that, just put it in the bag, <laughs> have it ready. But also if you have it in some sort of like put together zone right now, that's great too because you could have a friend or a relative pick it up for you. So I like to have everything in a small bag that goes in and out of this bag. So first of all, we have my toothbrush, we have Christopher's toothbrush. Christopher will be staying with me while we're at the hospital. We have deodorants for both of us and toothpaste. Some people will bring shampoo and conditioner. I don't plan on taking a shower where I'm like shampooing and conditioning my hair at the hospital. I've packed it in the past and just never used it, so I'm not gonna bring it this time. I have a hairbrush and like, a bunch of hair things. My hair's gonna get nasty because I'm not planning on shampooing or conditioning it. So let's plan for the nasty. <laughs> We've never put our babies in the nursery, so I guess it depends on that. If you do have nursery assistants, maybe you will have a little more time for things like that, but Christopher and I get very like hovery around our newborns and we keep them with us or we follow them out to any things that they need. Typically, I'm very exhausted. And in the past, I've also breastfed all my babies. I don't know how my body will respond this time around, but I know I'll be attempting to breastfeed at the very least. That happens every two to three hours and you have to wake up and stay on that cycle. And then throughout those two to three hours while you're trying to get a little bit of rest, you're also attempting to get the baby to sleep and also dealing with things like poopy diapers and pee and a lot of the postpartum nurse visit. So you have a lot of people coming in to check the baby's vitals, to do things like blood work and just various things. They'll also check me. There's just not a lot of time for rest, let alone time to like take a nice shower and like relax in the shower. So I don't usually plan for that. Speaking of, I bring makeup every time. I never do my makeup after I have the baby, but I bring it. I have a little bit of makeup. It's not gonna happen after the baby's born. I might wanna put some on before, like when I'm in labor and not feeling uncomfortable. I kinda of like to just put some on and feel nice if I haven't yet that day. Who knows if that'll actually happen. I'm hoping that my hair, you can see that it's straightened right now. I'm hoping that I'll be at the cycle <laughs> in my hair care, like before labor, where I'll have it like freshly washed and straightened. I've been wearing my hair naturally curly for like over a year and I haven't used any heat products on it, but I'm straightening it right now because I want it to be a little bit less of a hassle while I'm in the hospital. My goal is to avoid tangles. When I wear my hair naturally curly, it gets tangly really easily in a hospital bed. We'll be filming, probably not during the birth because I don't think our hospital lets us, but we're gonna wanna make sure we bring something it's like a video camera with a memory card and we were gonna have extra batteries, a battery charger. And then you also wanna bring, you know, your phone. I'm not gonna put my phone in right now because I'm gonna be using it up until I go into labor. And then like anything you need to charge your phone. So we have like 
a regular charger, and then I'm also gonna bring a portable charger. It's totally charged and ready. It can charge me or Christopher's phone. You don't always know you'll have an outlet right next to you. So I like to have my phone near me, but if I need to charge it, this will have a charge that should last us for the whole stay. I also wear an Apple Watch, so we're bringing an Apple Watch charger. I will also be bringing my computer. So I'll have a computer charger as well. I'm not gonna pack the computer right now. I do a lot of like video streaming and stuff, and our hospital has decent Wi-Fi. I've definitely had hospitals that had terrible Wi-Fi, so it's not something I completely rely on. I might be streaming and like watching things on my computer or doing other things on my computer. I will say I will not be working. <laughs> So Christopher, when I go into labor delivery, he'll often like have his computer and be sitting there and working away. And then he'll ask me like, oh, do you wanna check this out? And I, I'm usually like, no, get that away from me. <laughs> I don't want to do anything that remotely resembles like working. That's because I get in my own special labor and delivery mindset. Expect that if you're preparing to go into a hospital to deliver a baby for the first time, just that however you usually respond to things might not be how you're responding to things when you're in labor and delivery. Even watching shows, like I always plan to have a show because it's something that I do a lot to relax or calm myself. And when I go into labor and delivery, I feel like last time I was a lot more likely to be messing around on my phone or to be talking to friends and family and people who've come to visit or even like messing around like putting on makeup. I was more comfortable doing that, I don't know why but I was more comfortable doing that than like a lot of normal things that take just even an ounce of focus. <laughs> I didn't really wanna read a book or a magazine or um, even watch a show as much. So I don't pack a lot of like entertainment options. And I also don't watch like the hospital television at all. Christopher and I have brought games to our past births and we did have success with that with Bailey. Like Christopher and I played backgammon and a couple other games, but overall I'm not usually in, even into doing that. So I also see a lot of people talk about bringing music selections. I never do. I don't want to hear any music. <laughs> It's not me, but it might be you. However, I do think it's important for our kids to have some activities. They're usually waiting in the waiting room and hanging out with family and doing things, but I wanna make sure that they have like something like a water wow for Duncan, a book for Bailey or Jacob, or a game, something like that. They also come into the labor and delivery room with me and hang out when things are calmer. And last time Bailey watched the birth and it was awesome. And I know she wants to do it again. So hopefully that ends up happening. And I think Parker wants to too, but I don't know what's gonna happen there. One thing that I do not bring is a birth plan. I have never brought a birth plan. I don't wanna feel like my delivery has to go a certain way or I'll end up being like disappointed or upset with the doctors around me or the nurses around me. I have some ideas of things that are important to me while giving birth, but overall I'm also open to discussing and talking and, and communicating what I'd like um, as opposed to having it just like really written down and getting very obsessive about it turning out a certain way. And it's never been a problem. And I've had some doctors who are like the on-call doctors who I really disagreed with and I still didn't have a problem. I feel like I was able to communicate it and Christopher was able to communicate like, no, that's not what we wanna do. And it worked out. And I will say, if you've never gone into labor and delivery before, you're mostly talking to nurses up until when you get closer to labor and your doctor's like really there. And that's usually not a time when you're like chatting with your doctor, you're kind of like, yeah, it's go time. I get seen by on-call doctors, but it's not usually like my doctor that I see throughout the like laboring experience. The people you really interact with the most are the nurses. And I've also never had a bad nurse experience in labor and delivery. Like labor and delivery nurses are the most incredible, wonderful, amazing people. And I love them so much. <laughs> so don't be disappointed when you see a nurse and not a doctor because they're like incredible. Last time we packed like little gifts for the nurses. I think I'll be grabbing those before we go, but I don't know for sure. And what we did last time was like little $5 gift cards to Starbucks. And I think I had chocolate out, but I think that was like a little odd because it was like open food in a hospital room. I felt a little awkward being like, grab some chocolate. So I don't know, but there are a lot of cute little ideas if you wanna do that and you do not have to, but it's just kind of a fun thing and the nurses really are incredible and deserving of all things. <laughs> you don't wanna forget your personal information, like your photo ID, your insurance card, 
some dollar, dollar, dollars if you need to spend money or send somebody off to spend money for something. So I'm putting my wallet here. Probably gonna have to grab it back out, but don't forget your wallet. Okay, so one pretty extra thing that I do is I bring my own hospital gown. This is in no way necessary. I just like to have a cute, pretty hospital gown. And I wear that for labor and delivery, and then we'll change and wear the hospital gowns for postpartum. I feel like postpartum is definitely like my yucky phase where I just don't care anymore about anything. I brought these socks. They're like really cozy, fuzzy, warm socks. They're like sticky on the bottom because I think if you don't have this, they might not let you wear them walking around the hospital. They might not let me walk wear just socks around the hospital anyway. But mostly I bring these because I get really cold in hospitals and they will offer like extra warm blankets and things. And I always take that, like I always need extra blankets. Depending on how I feel and if my feet are sticking out of the blankets or whatever, I have these like giant socks. <laughs> So I can wear those. And then I also have a sweater for the same reason. A lot of this is moving more into the postpartum time. I am not planning on like changing into clothes or wearing clothes for most of the entire stay after the baby is born. I plan on mostly wearing their hospital gowns. The reason for this is because it's kind of like a bloody messy time and I don't wanna wear clothes and worry about blood getting on them or like them being yucky. And I also don't wanna think about taking clothes on and off to go to the bathroom or to get checked out by the nurses. I'll wear things more on top where I know it won't be as messy and where I know I'm gonna need like a little bit of extra warmth while I'm nursing. So these things are mostly about comfort, access, and, and modesty, just because, <laughs> First of all, I know at that point, I'm not gonna be feeling very modest. I'm not gonna ultimately care if a nurse like walks in and I'm like, hey. But when I have visitors, or if that does happen and it's convenient in the moment, I'll kind of cover up a little bit. So I have this, which is just like soft and cozy and kind of like a robe thing. Maybe it's like a long cardigan. I don't really know what it is. And then I have this like nightgown thing that can pull down really easily for nursing. I don't know that I'll wear that. I'll probably be more likely to be in a hospital gown, but I'm gonna bring it just in case. And this is a similar thing. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a long, soft, warm shirt. So this is just mostly to keep me nice and warm and to nurse easily. So as I pack, I'm keeping one side that's like, labor and delivery, and then another side that's more postpartum. So that way those things aren't getting in the way of each other. When I need to grab something for labor and delivery, I don't wanna be sorting through all my like clothes that I brought for the postpartum recovery time. So I have one outfit that's like me and matching the baby that's supposed to just be like cute to take photos with. And that's gonna happen if I feel up to it. And if I don't feel up to it, I'm not gonna worry about taking newborn photos while I'm in the hospital and feeling gross. <laughs> but hopefully I get some cute pictures of me like matching the baby. This is if my other stuff is too warm. I have this little like tank toppy thing. Again, really easy access, really stretchy and soft. I'm packing a nursing bra, but honestly, I'm probably not gonna wear one. I don't wanna feel like too confined. I just don't think that I'll end up using this it's here. Some people might need a nursing bra because one side will leak while they're feeding the baby. My milk typically doesn't come in very strong right away. It usually takes until I leave the hospital or like just about when I'm leaving the hospital. So I usually don't have a lot of leaks and I'm not really planning on that being an issue. And I'm also planning on if it is an issue, like the hospital having some sort of nursing pad or something because I'm not gonna bring any. I do however have Lanzano Lanolin nipple cream, which is in my diaper bag. Speaking of nursing, I also have my favorite nursing cover. I have nursing covers in my diaper bag as well, but just in case our diaper bag is still in the car or something, I'll have this ready to go when I need it. This is my favorite one. It has like this long terry cloth at the bottom and it's really large and it has this thing that you go over your head with. People ask me the brand when I did my diaper bag video and I'm looking for it right now. It's basically, I got it on Amazon, and this one says kids and such. But I think if you type in like extra large nursing cover, you'll see one that looks like this and one that's gray with like arrows, and I have both of those and love them. You know what, I'm gonna put that over my, I'm trying to think, I think I'm gonna put this on my labor and delivery side because right when I have the baby, I'm gonna wanna be able to grab it. I might not care about modesty at all at that second, but just in case. And then I have my going home outfit, which is just uh, one of my maternity shirts, a tank top, 
some underwear, and oh my gosh, my favorite pregnancy pants. These are gonna be way too large because they're kind of large on me now while I'm pregnant. It's okay, I'll hold them up. I call these my pirate pants. They're my absolute favorite, favorite things to wear while I'm pregnant. And they're just like, they feel like nothing. They slide on, they don't even really have elastic. They're super loose and light. They'll fit me at any size, aside from the fact that they'll probably be falling off. So these are Capri Gaucho pants. That's what you'd wanna type in if you're searching on Amazon. I absolutely love them. I don't know that they're necessarily like flattering or look good on me at all, but they're absolutely my go-to maternity pants. Like I just, I love them so much and they'll work really well for that ride home. In general, you'll see I only packed one pair of underwear for this whole trip because I'm really dependent on the stuff that the hospital provides. So our hospital, I've been there before. I know they supply a lot of the things that I'm gonna need and I'm pretty low maintenance and okay with what they supply. As far as underwear goes, they'll be giving me like mesh underwear and like ginormous pads and I'm fine with that. I don't feel a need to pack anything more than what they give me. However, I was really excited because Frida Mom, which is like the Frida Baby products, they had this whole postpartum kit that I saw at Target. And I was like, yes. I don't know for sure if I'll need any of this stuff. My hospital typically provides it. It has like pads that can turn into ice packs. I'm sorry, if you haven't been in that postpartum life, you don't know that that is absolutely like dream goals, exactly what you want. Something that makes you have a big old smile on your face. Yes. By any chance you can get these and your hospital does not have them, make sure you put them in your hospital bag. They also have these like underwear sets in here. Like they're like nicer versions of what the hospital provides. For sure, like this is definitely nicer stuff. I don't know, I'm fine with what the hospital has. These are like witch hazel pads and uh, perennial heal healing foam. I'm gonna put this whole set in our car because I don't think I'll need it, but just in case I'm in particular discomfort or like really need an extra thing, it'll be available and not like, oh man, why did I leave that at home? I also bought the Perry bottle that Frida Mom has. The hospital always provides these, but this one has like, has like a hook. Like it hooks up and makes it easier apparently. I did use this when I had Duncan and, and it was good. It's not necessary, but it was good. And again, I think that these are really, really awesome if you don't have that sort of thing provided at your hospital. So for now, I'm gonna put this whole set back in the box and just keep it in our trunk. And then I can always send Christopher down to the car if I feel like I need it. Speaking of Christopher, he gets some space in here too. He didn't pack much, he's so cute. I asked him to pack what he needed and he just has one change of clothes in here. I guess he's planning on getting out of that hospital as fast as he can. He packs some like cozy pajamas and a shirt and some underwear and socks. He's pretty low maintenance like that. I should get him a, a, a matching robe so we can both do a matching baby photo shoot. The other thing that won't be making it into our bag but is my absolute biggest necessity is my bobby pillow. I absolutely will need it at the hospital. I think one of the first times I had a kid I didn't bring a pillow to the hospital and they just like, they kept like stacking like a hundred pillows around me to nurse. I will bring my boppy pillow with me kind of everywhere I go for the first month of my baby's birth. I bring my boppy pillow to Target when I go shopping. I love my boppy. I'm also due on Halloween, so I have a little baby costume picked out if I need it, but I don't know, I kind of feel like maybe I'll end up having the baby like before Halloween, but I don't know. It could happen after and then I won't even need the costume that I bought. Nah. We don't know. One thing we don't have in here are snacks. So that's on my list, but I also feel like I don't have like major pressure to get a bunch of snacks in here. I feel like last time I packed a bunch of snacks and didn't really use them. I'm more likely to eat from the hospital food menu. And Christopher will often have like a relative or a friend pick up a meal for him or for me. It is smart to have some sort of sustenance because there will be hours when you just can't access food. We just don't go really heavy on the snacks because we find we don't really eat them as much. I also can't eat. Where we live, the rule is you can't eat while you're in the hospital when you're in labor. But that doesn't mean that Christopher won't be hungry when I'm in labor. But it's also not super cute for me to watch him eat. So I think he's always been pretty respectful where he doesn't like eat a lot in the room while I'm sitting there going like, oh, how's, how's that food treating you? So that is that. I am all packed and ready to go. I think I'll either keep 
this suitcase in the trunk of our car or like right by the front door. As I said before, there's some stuff I'm gonna need to access between now and when I go into labor and delivery. But I also wanna have this close enough that when I take things out of it, I don't just forget to put the things back in and that I can also add anything if I do feel like, oh, I, I need that. Baby time! <laughs>